hello. Uh, so this is what you see is the painting of a fountain of youth. So you can see people entering, old people, frail, entering on one side, into this, going into these healing waters, and then emerging on the other side, rejuvenated. And this is what people have been dreaming for centuries, to find this fountain of youth. So my work actually has to do with pretty much the same thing. So I'm a biologist, and I study longevity. I'm looking for the fountain of youth. So how did I get to be interested in it? Uh, I was born in a family of two scientists, so both my parents are physicists. And from the beginning, I knew I want to be a scientist, but I wanted to be different from my parents. So I chose biology. Again, I didn't know which area of biology I would want to study. And when I was a sophomore in college, in, I was born in Russia, in St. Petersburg, of you know, former Soviet Union. Uh, I heard a lecture by a guest professor, and he spoke about aging research and how cells age. And it fascinated me so much that I decided, okay, this is what I want to do when I become independent, and after I go through all this, this is what I want to do. And why aging is so fascinating? So now the biggest killer of people in developed countries is aging. Uh, so, of course, people die from heart disease, from cancer, stroke, uh, but all these maladies happen as we age, so they are the result of aging. So if instead of treating the cause, treating each disease individually, uh, we slow down aging so we can take care of all of these diseases, and this is what's just amazing about it. Uh, so then, you know, it took me many years uh, studying, PhD, and then postdoc, until I was able to found my own laboratories and start approaching this pro problem, big problem. And I wanted to do it something different from, from what everybody does, because the classical way would be to take a fruit fly or a mouse uh, and um, find a mutant that maybe lives a little bit longer and study that. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to go look out in nature. Uh, we have animals that live so much longer, and then they have relatives that live short. So, for example, here, so these are my favorite animals. These are rodents. I love rodents very much. And here you can see mouse, rat, and underneath in red text is their maximum lifespan. Uh, the, some of them are very short-lived, and these are the ones that most scientists focus on. But you have animals that are very long-lived, uh, capybara, beaver, squirrel, or naked morat, which is my favorite. Uh, they can live so much longer. So if we can find uh, what makes naked morat live 10 times longer than the mouse, so then this is something we can use to make humans live longer. So here I would like to introduce to you uh, my favorite animal, naked mole rat. <laughs> so the real thing is actually much smaller. This is just a stuffed toy. So the real thing is about this big, like a mouse. Uh, but they live 10 times longer than mice, up to 32 years. And I'm going to show you uh, a little video from our laboratory so you can see naked mole rats. And I think there is inner beauty in these animals. People think they are ugly. I don't think so, and I hope you will agree with me after you see it. Uh, so these are ama truly amazing animals. They live so long, and they don't get sicker as they age. Uh, they never develop cancer. Uh, they don't develop age-related disease. Um, they don't develop heart disease, atherosclerosis, or these changes in the brain, like in Alzheimer's disease. So they pretty much don't age. So we decided, let's find out why. And um, after a lot of trial and error, uh, we were able to actually come down to a, a single molecule, which is uh, something that's uh, called hyaluronin. Here, you can see, a petri dish, and this is where cells from naked morat were growing, and the student is holding a Pasteur pipette and pretty much taking a goo out of the petri dish, because cells of naked morat secrete some 
kind of gooey substance. Uh, and uh, we found that this substance is called hyaluronan or hyaluronic acid. And this is what protects naked morat from cancer. So this molecule somehow prevents uh, naked morat cells from forming tumors. And it can also, through other properties, contribute to longevity of naked morat. Uh, so human cells also make this molecule, but it's much shorter. In the naked morat, it's very, very long. It's different. So the question is, like, can we take it from naked morat and can it benefit other species? Because, you know, maybe it's only something that's good for naked morats. So this little puppy is a Sharpie dog, and they were bred by humans to have these skin folds. And humans didn't know what's inside the skin folds in the beginning. Now we know. So those skin folds are filled with hyaluronin, so the same molecule. And when we looked at um, veterinary records and the incidence of cancer in dogs, it turns out that Sharpie dogs uh, have significantly lower risk of several cancers. So inadvertently, people selected these dogs to overproduce hyaluronin, and now the dogs are protected from cancer. So that was really something exciting. Well, perhaps we can also use it for humans. So now let's look, you know, other, or something other than naked morat. So gray squirrel. So this is not an exotic animal. So we probably all have seen gray squirrels, and many people hate them because uh, these squirrels compete with native European red squirrels, so people hate them and so forth. But it's a fascinating animal because they can live up to 24 years, which is, again, amazingly long lifespan. So we started to study gray squirrels. So how do they do it? And we were surprised to find gray squirrel cells do not produce this very long hyaluron, and so they do it completely differently. Uh, so we are actually now pretty close to finding out uh, the mechanism. But again, what I want to say here, it's different from naked morat. So squirrels chose completely different pathway to longevity. And now another animal I would like to introduce to you, now not a rodent, it's a bowhead whale. So whales are amazing. Bowhead whale can live up to 211 years. And how did people find out? Uh, because some whales were hunted and they had pieces of harpoons lodged into their tissues and it was possible to date those pieces and say, well, these animals can live 200 years. And another thing that's amazing about whales, you all know they're huge. So now, the risk of getting cancerous growth depends on the number of cells because a tumor grows out of one cell mutating. So imagine now a whale is 2,000 times heavier than a human. It has 2,000 times more cells in its body. So its risk of developing a tumor is 2,000 times greater. So you would say, why don't they just die in infancy from cancer? No, they don't because they have mechanisms to protect them from cancer. And this, these are the mechanisms that are better than ours, because they are so much bigger than us, so they need more. Uh, and now we are working with samples that were taken from whales, and we study their cells. And again, they don't go through hyaluronan pathway. They don't use the pathway that gray squirrel chose. They chose something else. So again, we are finding something completely unexpected and something that humans do not have. So um, what we would like to do, so this is the summary. We want to take those mechanisms, those adaptations from that animal or the intelligent naked morat and then bring them to human. And uh, in case of hyaluronin, this is really a success story because this is one molecule, so we we were able to identify a single molecule that we can take and we can pretty much apply to people. So hyaluronin is already used uh, by humans, uh, although not this very long version that we found in Nick and Mora, so it's a shorter version, uh, but it is used in arthritis patients, in injections to the knee, uh, it's used in cosmetic products, so it is something that can be readily applied, and now we are developing ways of how it could be used in people, this very long version, which may be protective from cancer, and we hope maybe promoting longevity, so we were, this is a real success story, but there is so much more out there, uh, because 
as I showed you, there are so many long-lived species, and each one of them evolves something different. And you would say, well, human is a long-lived species, so why don't we study human? Well, but in humans, yes, we have very good mechanisms that take us through life into our 80s and 90s, if we are lucky, and maybe hundreds. Uh, but these mechanisms may already be sort of maximized, optimized, and we perhaps cannot drastically improve them. But if we take something from those other species that, you know, very obscure creatures, uh, and borrow them so we can benefit and hopefully we can extend human lifespan significantly. So to sum summarize what I would like to say that uh, this is a very exciting time uh, to do aging research. And I believe that uh, it is possible to extend human lifespan. It is possible to keep people healthy for much longer and cure all those diseases of aging. And, well, I'm very excited doing this research, and I believe that uh, real discoveries lie into looking into long-lived species in the wild. There are so many of them, and there is so much to be found over there. So I'm very optimistic about human life, that we can live so much longer and healthier. Thank you. Thank you.